Hello, and thank you for tuning into this week's Mayor's Update. As always, we have a lot of important information to share with you here this week, so please feel free to share this video with your friends, family, relatives, and anyone else who you think might find this information helpful over the course of the coming week. It's been quite a busy week here in the city of Gardner, but we'll get through as much information as we can in the short time that we are allotted in this video. Uh, this past week, you should have received the letters we talked about a couple weeks ago regarding the tax rate and how things are working for the preliminary tax bills that are again due August 1st and then again in November and then how those compare to what we expect the real tax bills uh, that are going to be sent out in January and April. So if you did not receive that letter, we do have some extra copies available in Gardner City Hall. However, every residence and business should have received a copy of that in the mail. Uh, thank you very much to the staff in the Treasure Collector's Office and the staff in the Assessor's Office for putting all of that information together. And again, if you have any further questions after you read those documents in that letter, you can contact those two offices at any time and they'll be happy to help walk you through the, uh, what's going on and the anomaly that we're seeing this year statewide, not just us here in the city of Gardner. Uh, we do have some paving updates. We do expect uh, Parker Street to be paved sometime within the next three weeks uh, as the concrete sidewalks have been fully poured and settled over on Parker Street. Uh, there is some work being done on Connor Street over at the old Ryan Block Temptations buildings uh, with Mass Ave Realty who now owns those. Uh, so if you see some work being done there, that's kind of more facade work that's being done that's not related to the infrastructure projects that are going on underneath them. Uh, and then of course we do have some different buildings being uh, you know, repaired and having new construction being done over at 25 Main Street and the Bullnose Flatiron building. Uh, further down on Main Street as well, we see some progress being done. So I want to say thank you to the developers who are there. Uh, a lot of the work that we've done on the city side and we're working with our private sector partners is really opening up a lot of growth for Gardner. There's room now for 34 storefronts that are now either currently under construction or being renovated or being built newly. Uh, alongside but around 160 to 165 new or current apartment uh, units that are either being completely refurbished or newly constructed that we'll have in the downtown area alone within the next two to three years. Uh, so there's a lot of growth and potential happening in downtown Gardner. So if you know anyone who's looking to settle in the Gardner area, uh, keep your fingers crossed. There will be some new apartment units opening up soon. Or if you know anyone who's interested in opening up a business in the city of Gardner, that's a great way to talk about the sustainability moving forward forward and the viability of opening up a new business but if you're looking for that location to contact my office or our city economic development coordinator Jessica DeRoy at any time and we'll be happy to put you in touch with these new developers so you can check out some of the spaces that are going to be available quite soon. Uh, the Massachusetts Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs, that's a section of the governor's cabinet, has listed the city of Gardner in what's called a critical drought condition and made a suspension of all non-essential outdoor watering use uh, citywide and it's actually countywide. They did it for all of Worcester County. Uh, this means that the water levels in the certain reservoirs in the city, again for us it's in Pearly Brook, uh, for several different places it's in different uh, water sources. Um, that are the water level is lower than usual by a certain percentage they go by inches to determine how many how critical the situation is uh, since we have been at that level for about a month that's what puts Gardner in that critical situation now how this relates to us citywide in terms of our water supply Crystal Lake is actually doing quite well uh, Pearly Brook is a little bit lower than usual however Snake Pond and Crystal Lake are actually doing really uh, good in terms of water levels compared to other excuse me, reservoirs across the state. So we really don't have much to worry about in terms of our direct water supply, but that doesn't mean we can't be doing our part to make sure we don't get to what we're seeing in several different portions of the, uh, the state. So do remember that uh, the Environmental Protection Agency of uh, the Massachusetts Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs does have that in that drought condition for a reason is that while we're doing okay right now, we're doing okay because we're pulling water out of Pearly Brook as part of our uh, water management plan. And if Pearly Brook goes down, then those levels are going to go down and it's just a domino effect from there. So really do make sure you're doing your part to conserve water, uh, especially during these drought times. And we'll let you know when those drought conditions and those restrictions that the state issues get lifted. Again, these are all restrictions that the state implements upon us as cities and towns across Massachusetts, not things that we run uh, locally here. National Night Out is coming this coming Tuesday, August 2nd uh, at Gardner High School. Now, 
This is a new location. It is at Gardner High School, not at Monument Park, where we've traditionally had it in the past. However, thanks to the work of our prevention coordinator, Veronica Patty, uh, we were able to get a partnership with Wachusett Mountain, uh, and they have sp agreed to sponsor bus transportation from Monument Park to Gardner High School. That way, if you do go to the old spot that it used to be, or you don't have a way to get to Gardner High, we'll provide that resource for you there. And again, that takes place this coming Tuesday, August 2nd at 5.30 p.m at Gardner High School and the event goes until 9 p.m. as well. Uh, there was a misprint in the Gardner News this past week uh, that listed the rain date of the event, which is August 9th. Again, this is happening August 2nd, this coming Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. at Gardner High School. Uh, the town of Templeton has uh, gone into partnership with the city of Gardner on our veteran services side of things. We'll temporarily be helping the town of Templeton out after their veteran service officer has retired recently from the town. Uh, so if you know any veterans who require services, Lynette Gabrilla, our city's veteran service agent, uh, will be taking over all of those veterans cases from the town of Templeton. We are exploring a potential expansion into future, uh, future long-term partnership with the town of Templeton in those roles, but for now we'll at least be temporarily finding out to get make sure that the town can get back on their feet and no veterans have a blip in the services that they're supposed to be receiving. And I do want to thank Lynette also because she does not just run veteran services for the city of Gardner and now the town of Templeton, but also for the towns of Westminster, Ashburnham, and Princeton as well. And as we're growing what's called the Wachusett Veterans District here, uh, it really does make Gardner the central hub for the services for the region there. And it's something that we've seen uh, really work well with our regional programming that we've done either with our vaccination clinic and our testing distributions uh, at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic now with the Veterans Services Agreement and so on from there. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing how we can work with our partners in the area to provide the services that we offer to our residents. Uh, this uh, earlier today from when this was being filmed, I had the pleasure of joining Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito and the Secretary of Transportation for the Governor's Cabinet, Jamie Tessier, uh, to uh, receive formally the Complete Streets Grant Award that we talked about a little bit in last week's video. This is $400,000 being used to uh, construct phase one of the extension of the North Central Pathway uh, bike trail that'll go from uh, the Gardner Veterans Memorial Skating Arena up Park Street, down on the uh, Elks uh, Lodge side of uh, Park Street, right across the street from Monument Park. Uh, where the current on-street parking is, scoop back down into the future Park Street Park that the City Council has approved funding for, down on the rail bed side of uh, the Greenwood Memorial Pool and leading up to Crystal Lake Cemetery. Uh, so that will all be done within the next year or two. Uh, and we did receive the Mass Trails funding uh, a couple weeks ago in the amount of $200,000 to do the design of phase two of that project. And that's going from Crystal Lake Cemetery up by the new National Grid substation up behind the golf course and through the North Gardner Woods to Route 140. So thank you very much to Ms. Lindsay Butler and our Department of Community Development and Planning for securing both of those grants for us so that we can continue that great work that's there. Uh, just to put this into perspective, this is a very competitive grant. Of the 351 cities and towns uh, in Massachusetts, 242 applied for this grant and only 16 received funding. And in fact, Gardner is the only community in North Central Massachusetts uh, that received funding from this program. Uh, if you look at all the other ones, they're uh, out west in uh, North Middlesex County or in uh, South Worcester County. Uh, so it's really, you know, the fact that we got that grant really says something when you look at the odds that we had of receiving that grant. So thank you very much, Lindsay, for all of that work to get that uh, funding here. Uh, you know, this is all money that our tax dollars are going towards that are paying for these grants. So we should be doing everything we can to make sure that that money comes back into our community to benefit our residents here. And we've been quite successful with that in the past two years and are very proud of the work that we've been able to do to get these extra grant funding into Gardner so that we can get several of these projects off the ground that we've had on the back burner for several decades, let alone years. Lastly, uh, we are here at the Gardner Dog Park. We talked about this a little bit in a couple uh, different updates that we've given here. We wanted to show you some of the work that's being done. You'll see behind me the mulch pad that we talked about. This has all come from trees that we have cut down in the city over the past couple years as part of our forestry management plan citywide. We take those trees and ground, grind them down into mulch so that we don't have to go out and pay for something separate. Uh, and we use that mulch here at the dog park and over at the uh, Gardner Golf Course to be as sustainable as possible. Uh, and then you may be able to see the two concrete pads, one in the small dog section and one in the large dog section, 
where those shade pavilions are going soon. Uh, thanks to, again, the grant that we received from the Stanton Foundation that our Community Development Department wrote for us. Uh, so if you're ever out in the city and looking for a place, particularly if you have a dog, feel free to come down here to the Gardner Dog Park and enjoy a great time. Uh, there was some concerns in previous years about put, uh, puddling in the area and concerns about anything growing in that water. We fixed all that now with the addition of the extra wood chips that we've put in. And we have fixed all the pipes here too for the drinking fountains for the dogs too. So it really is a great resource that we have here in the city and I look forward to seeing how we can continue to grow it in the future. However, that concludes this week's update. As always, if you have any questions on anything at all that was said in this update, you can contact my office at any time and we'll be happy to walk you all uh, through that. But until we speak again next week, get outside and enjoy the warm weather while we still have it here and I look forward to speaking with you soon. Thank you very much and have a great day.